Okay, this is uh, topic 44, uh, continuing with the lesson. Now, if you heard the probably the last minute of the previous lesson, it gets a little bit confusing, right? So, I'm redoing this part where I do the graph. So, notice that this is still the same. All right, I still have the uh, sound analysis of the derivative. This is the sound analysis, if you will, of function f, and this is the second derivative, right? So this is the sound analysis. Now, what I put here is basically a way to help me understand what I'm trying to do as I'm doing it. All right, if it's negative, remember the second derivative, second derivative is negative, then you have concave down, all right? If the second derivative is positive, this is concave up. Now, notice that right here, I have to take into account this vertical tangent, so then I have negative, negative for the second derivative, which means I have concave down at both points. And then now finally between negative 5 and 7 is going to be concave up, right? So one more time, uh, notice that if you're watching this, I kind of made a mistake. Unless I've edited that, edited that out of it, which I don't think I will. Um, I still have to have, they want me to do the graph, sketch the graph of the function, right? So this would be f of x. This would be the x values, and then now I would have 1... Two, three, four, five, six, and seven over here. Okay, and then on the other side, I would have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. Okay. So now I have all those points. Now, what I did wrong on the last one is I said, well, you have a minimum at negative 1, and I put it at 1. Okay, so I'm sorry. So what I like to do, this is really up to you, is I do a dotted line. And I'm going to write minimum here. I noticed that I found that out earlier, that I had a minimum at negative 1, and I have a relative max at negative 5. Right? So I have a relative max. I have a relative max there. Now, where it gets kind of messy is the fact that I have some uh, concavity changes, right? I have a, a few places where the concavity changes, like for example at negative 3. So, at negative 3, I'm going to change to a different highlighter here. And I'm just, this is just a reminder that when I cross that yellow line, I'm supposed to change concavity. And then now I also have another change of concavity. Let's see at 2 so at 2 I have another change of concavity let's see what else and then 1 at 5 okay so this is kind of a lot of things to keep in to uh, to have in the back of your mind right but hopefully this will make it a little bit easier for you now remember that what I'm trying to do here now is I'm going to try to increase between negative 7 and 5. So between that point and that point, I'm increasing, and I'm supposed to be concave down. All right, notice that after that point, I'm going to be decreasing. So this is the reason why you have a max. So it depends where you start, but I'm going to go ahead and start right here. You can start down here if you like. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to be concave down all the way until I get to that point. Okay, so now at that point, I'm going to start decreasing, right? but notice that I'm still concave down because this is still within that interval, and that kind of makes sense. Now, once I actually hit this 3, then I'm going to change concavity. So notice this is concave down still. I'm going to change to concave up. And when I change to concave up, I'm going to go all the way to here where I have a minimum, so I know that I'm not, I'm not going to go any farther down than that. And then now, notice that I'm still concave up all the way until I get to 2. All right, so I'm still going to continue being concave up. And then at that point, I'm going to change to concave down. All right, so I'm, notice that from that point, I'm increasing the whole time. All right, I'm increasing from negative 1. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm increasing from negative 1, which is down here, all the way basically throughout the whole thing. So from now on, this graph better keep, keep going up but right now. The other thing that I have to take into account is this vertical tangent that happens here, right? So 
This one I'm going to be uh, concave down. And once I get to this three, I'm going to make a little sharp point right there because that's where the vertical tangent happened. And I'm going to keep going. All right, I'm going to keep going all the way until I get to this other yellow line. And at that line, I'm going to switch to concave up. All right, so notice that I switched at five to concave up. So you can kind of start to, you can kind of tell how complicated this can get, all right, especially with a problem like this where you have so many things going on, all right, but trying to break this apart into smaller parts that you can sort of draw kind of helps out, all right. Again, this lines are, are optional, but uh, they can really help you out when you're trying to grab something correctly, okay. Now, finally, on part F that I didn't do the last time, they're asking me to determine any absolute extrema, right? So this is part F, All right? And it depends according to the way you drew the graph. But for me, my absolute minimum is going to be located at x is equal to negative 1. That is the lowest point I have here. And my absolute maximum is at x is equal to 7 because that's the highest point that I have. Okay, so now hopefully that helped. Uh, hopefully that's a little more clear. Um, I know you're probably going to have questions, all right? so make sure and ask me when I see you again.